Hello everyone. So today we'll talk on this topic that is basics of echocardiography. And in this topic, we'll discuss only about transthoracic views of echocardiography. So first of all, this is a probe that we use for doing this echo. And in adults, we use this high or low frequency probe. That is a 5 hertz to increase the penetration. While in pediatric age group, we use high frequency probe as the cardiac system in pediatrics are superficial. Okay. Now, the important thing about this USG probe is that we have this index mark here. We use this index mark in 2D echo to make different views. So the position of this index mark while making any view is quite important. Then the first view that we make is the parasternal long axis view. In this, we'll put the index mark at 10 o'clock position. So we are seeing here that this is the index mark. We'll put this probe, this is sternum. We'll put this probe in third or fourth intercostal space parasternally, left-sided. Yeah. At 90 degree. And the position of index mark is 10 o'clock. Clear? And we'll put this probe straight and update it at 90 degree. Another important thing is the position of patient while doing a 2D echography is left lateral. Yes. Now this is the anatomical view. We can see that we have put the probe here at third or fourth intercostal space parasternally and index mark is here that is at, that is at 10 o'clock position. And we can see this is left atrium. We have left ventricle here separating the left atria and left ventricle is mitral valve or a bicuspid valve. We have this right ventricle here. This is LVOT that is left ventricle outflow tract. And then we have this outer here. Okay. So this is how the uh, anatomical structures will look in a parasternal long axis view. We can also see uh, interventricular septum here and posterior wall here. Behind the posterior wall, there is this pericardium. This is an anatomical view. Now this is the echo view showing parasternal long axis view. In this, this is left atrium. This wall is vital wall. And we have this left ventricular cavity. The structure attached to this leaflet of mitral wall, this is papillary muscle. We have this LVOT, that is left ventricular outflow tract. Here we have this aortic wall and then we have aorta going here. Here this cavity is RV. Then we have this interventricular septum, posterior wall, and behind the posterior wall, this shining structure that is there is pericardium. 
this, this is how an, uh, the anatomical structure will look in a parasternal long axis view or we can call it as pilex view. We can also increase the depth. So the structure we are seeing here, the same structure we are seeing here, but uh, the depth here increase. We can also foreshorten this area to focus on some particular structure. So the characters of good PLEX we are that it should be straight. That is, uh, the LA should be at three o'clock position, and aorta should be at two to three o'clock position. LV apex, which is here, should be at nine to ten o'clock position, and USG beam should be at right angle. So in this, we can see this USG beam going, and this should be at 90 degree. Now, uh, PLEX view is quite important as we have to measure certain structures and their length and diameter in PLEX view. At end diastole, we'll measure the diameter of interventricular septum, LV cavity diameter, and posterior wall diameter. So we'll pause the cardiac cycle in and diastole, like with this is in this view it is shown. Okay, then we can measure the interventricular septum. We can also measure the LV cavity and posterior wall. And uh, again, we can also measure the RV diameter from this view. So it is quite important that in this view. What are the structures that we can measure at and diastole? What are the structures that we can measure at and systole? And what are the structures that we can measure at mistristole? So at and diastole, we can measure the interventricular septum. We can measure the LV diameter, posterior wall and RV diameter. So this is, here we can see the uh, number labeled three is posterior wall. Measure, uh, label two is LV cavity. One is interventricular septum. And the number measured written as four is RV cavity. At end systole, we can measure LA diameter and we have to measure, measure LV diameter again at L, uh, end systole because LV diameter at diastole and LV diameter at systole, both have to be measured to reduce the ejection friction. So here one is, we have this paused PLEX view in which the heart is in systole phase. At end systole phase, so the number one which is labeled is LV at end systole. And the number measured as one here in this diagram is LA. Now the structures which are to be measured at mid systole is LVOT diameter. So we can see that uh, here this is LVOT just before the aortic wall. So we can measure LVOT here. And we can also measure aortic wall area. But uh, aortic wall area cannot be measured directly. So to measure the aortic wall area, we use this continuity equation. That is A1 or area at LVOT into VTI at LVOT is equals to area of aortic wall into VTI at aortic wall. This we'll discuss when, dis when we'll discuss about advanced eco. Then and at end diastole, we'll also measure the diameter of sinus of well selva and sinotubular structure. So we can see that this is 
aortic wall. Just after uh, aortic wall, the aorta has started, and this is the initial part of ascending aorta that is sinus of Wells. Now we can uh, modify this PLX view according to our needs. So we can just place the probe one space up. That is, if we have placed it in third ICS, then we can just shift it to second ICS to form high PLX view. And this view is used to see the ascending aorta. And it is more commonly used to rule out aneurysm or dissection or to look for the extent of dissection. Then we can also have this PLX view with apical tilt. So uh, this 2D echo probe, one moment in it is rotation. That is, the probe is placed here and we are moving the probe at its own axis just to change the location of index mark. This movement is called as rotation and another movement that we have in the probe is tilting or angulation. So in PLAX view, we have already discussed that we have placed the probe at 90 degree angle. Now if we tilt the probe towards the apex, then we can have this apical PLAX view. That is, in apical PLAX view, we can also see this apex. So here we have this LA vital wall, LV, and LV apex can also be seen here. This is papillary muscle, and we have this posterior wall, then we have visceral pericardium and parietal pericardium, and between visceral parietal pericardium, we can see this fluid here. So this is pericardial effusion. So this is again a PLAX view. I have added a video here, but it is not working now. So you can see that this is LA. Again, this is mitral valve, LV, LVOT, aorta, and R. Now PSEX view. So uh, for forming the PSEX view, we'll keep the probe at same intercostal space. But we'll rotate the probe. Angle would be again 90 degree, but we'll rotate the probe so as to put the index mark at 1 o'clock position. So in PLEX, we the index mark was at 10 o'clock position. Now here we have the index mark at 1 o'clock position. The first view that is formed in PSEX view is aortic PSEX view. That is PSEX view at the level of aorta. Okay. So in this, we can see this aortic wall, which is opening into the aorta. Then we have this left atrium. This is right atrium, opening through this tricuspid wall into RV. We have this pulmonary wall. The area just before pulmonary valve is RVOT, then and we have this pulmonary arteries dividing into right and left pulmonary arteries. So here we have this eco view of BSEX view at aortic wall level. In the center, we have this aortic wall. So from this view, we can tell the morphology of the aortic wall that is the aortic wall with bicuspid or tricuspid. Then we have this LA. We have this interatrial septum, RA, tricuspid wall, RVOT, pulmonary wall, and pulmonary artery. Okay. This is again a, a video of PCIC which is not working. So LA, RA, RV, pulmonary wall. In the center, we have aortic. This structure that is opening into the LA is pulmonary vein. So we have mostly three to 
Palmer remains opening to the LA. I just told you that we can foreshorten this angle just to focus on a particular structure. So in this P-sex view at our tick level, if we want to focus on the tricuspid wall, then we just foreshorten this view. Now we have RA here, RV here, and this wall is tricuspid wall. We can also foreshorten this view towards the back side. So we have this aortic wall here. We have this LA here. Now we have this mitral short axis view that is P sex view at the level of mitral wall. Okay. In this view, we'll keep the probe at the same point with the index mark at the same point. We'll just tilt the probe towards the apex. So we'll see this bicuspid mitral wall in the center. We have this interventricular septum here with RV behind it and LV cavity just below the mitral wall. And this is the best view to look for regional wall motion above. Again, this is the echo view, P6 view at mitral wall level. You can see this bicuspid mitral wall in between. Interventricular septum here. This is RV cavity. LV cavity behind this vital wall. In this was the video. Then this is a PSEX view at the level of papillary muscles. So again, if we tilt the probe more. Putting the probe at the same position, then we will have in this P-sex view at the level of papillary muscles, in which we can see this is the RV cavity, just like here. Okay. We have this interventricular septum, then we have this LV cavity, and we have this posterior and anterior papillary muscles. It's posterior medial papillary muscle and anterolateral papillary muscle. So this is a P-sex view at papillary muscle level. This is RV cavity, this is LV cavity with posterior medial and anterolateral papillary muscle. This is also V. Now we have P6 view at LV apex level, which we will see this LV apex. This is just to look whether LV apex is empty or we have a thrombus in the LV apex. So in this, we can see this is LV apex. Now uh, we have very we have this very important view that is a pical four chamber view, but we can also write it as a four C view. And this will uh, lift the probe from third intercostal space, put it in fifth intercostal space, left side, just medial to mid clavicular line that is at the position of the apex speed. Index mark would be from one to four o'clock position. A good apical four chamber view is that in which all the chambers should be straight. Apex should be formed by LV apex and not by RV, and LV should not be foreshortened. That is, LV cavity should be quite good visible. So, this is apical four chamber view. You can see the apex is being formed by LV. We have this LA air, RA air, LV and RV with mitral valve and tricuspid valve. So this is uh, a quite a good view to measure the ejection friction by using the Simpson method. This is an eco view showing a pygal four chamber view. We have this LA, RA here with interventricular septum here, LV, RV here with interventricular septum in between, along with mitral and trigestion. So uh, as we have already discussed, a good four chamber view is in which all the chambers should be straightened, apex should be formed by LV and LV cavity should be goodly visible. So we have this LV cavity, LV apex here, 
and all the four chambers are straight. Again, this for the video in which these are mitral and tricuspid valves, these are open. So it plays a diastolic phase. This is LV cavity R. Then apical five chamber. This is a very important view for aortic stenosis. Okay. So we can measure the severity of aortic stenosis and the pressure gradient in this view. And in this view, we have this LA here, LV here, RA here, RV here, and this is aorta. These are the aortic wall. Okay. So this view is formed by the probe at the same position, but we'll just tilt the probe slightly towards the apex. How to uh, how do we measure the uh, severity of AS? And this view is that we'll put a continuous wave Doppler at the level of aortic wall and uh, a graph like this is formed in which we can measure the Vmax. We can also measure the delta PG that is pressure gradient by using this continuous wave Doppler at the level of aortic wall using this five chamber view. So uh, there are uh, these continuous wave Doppler and pulse wave Doppler. And we have also the color Doppler that we'll discuss in the later sections. Now this is a eco view, this is a pical five chamber view. Here we have this LA here, LV, RV, aorta, and aortic wall. So again a video. Then we have a pical two chamber view. Okay. Just we'll uh, keep the probe at the same position. Just we'll rotate it anti-clockwise to bring index mark to one o'clock position. Then we have this apical two chamber view. This can also be used to measure ejection pressure. We have this apical chamber view in which LA, LV, mitral wall. This is a pulmonary vein opening into LA. This is a echo view showing LA, mitral wall, LV. And this is a pulmonary vein. This was a video showing pulmonary vein LA LV. We have a pical four ch three chamber view in which LA LV and aorta are seen. The third chamber is aorta. The probe would be the same position. We will further rotate it anti clockwise from two chamber view to ten o'clock position. So we have this LA LV mitral wall and aorta. This is the view showing LA. LV, outer, aortic wall. This is a three chamber. Again, this is a video. So, as a video of three chamber view showing LA, LV, mitral wall, and this aortic wall and aorta. Now we have this suprasternal view in which probe is placed at suprasternal notch with mark on towards the head. So in this view, the anatomical structures would be seen like this. We have this ascending aorta, the branches of arch of aorta, and then we have this descending aorta. Okay, so this view is used to look for aortic dissection and for vascular formalities. This is a eco view showing suprasternal view in which we have this ascending aorta, this arch of aorta, and we have this descending aorta with these branches of arch of aorta and right pulmonary artery. This was the video showing arch of aorta. And branches of arch of aorta. 
So uh, since the videos are not working, in the end, I'll just open the PowerPoint presentation directly and uh, we'll show you the videos. Then the last view that we have is subcoastal view. Then subcoastal view will put the probe two to three centimeter below the Ziffy standard. With index mark at three o'clock position. Then we have this subcostal view. This is uh, also a modified apica, modified four chamber view in which we can see these all the four chambers. Give this LA, mitral valve LB, then RA, RB, and tri uh, tricuspid valve. Then we have this interventricular and interatrial septum. This is the eco view LA, LB, mitral valve, RV, RA, tricuspid valve, interatrial, and interventricular septum. So, as a video. Then, uh, subcostal view can also be used to look, uh, look for IVC when we tilt it. So, we have this intervent, uh, inferior vena cava and hepatic net. These are opening into this RA. So you can see this is the view. I will see patting main opening path. We can measure the diameter of hepatic main and I will see from here. And check the compressibility and respiratory variation. So grossly we have these P like view. Then we have this P sex view at the level of aortic wall, mitral wall, papillary muscle, and apex. Then we have this apical four chamber view, apical five chamber view, apical three chamber view, apical two. We have suprastunda, subcostal. Basic views. Uh, basically, we have these. I think seven eight views. We have these eight views. Uh, this sends our discussion. Now I'll show you the PPT directly to look for the videos. I hope it is visible now, is it? Can I know that uh, the slides are visible? Yes, sir. Thank you. So uh, I'll show you the videos now. This is the first video. And this is showing this uh, peel wax view. In this, we have LA at the upper end. This is LA. Then we have this mitral wall. Then we have this LV. The uh, structure showing here is aortic wall. And this is aorta. Then we have this uh, our right ventricle behind this. We have this interventricular septum here, posterior wall here. Now we'll move to the next video. So this is a video of parasternal short axis view at the level of aortic wall. So we can see the structure in the middle is the aortic wall. You can also see the three cusps of the aortic wall here. And we have uh, this structure, which is LA. Then we have this structure, which is RA. And tricuspid valve we have here, and uh, the structure behind the tricuspid valve is R. So again, I start the video. You can also see the pulmonary veins entering into the LA. This is the uh, four shortened P sex view at the level of aortic valve. 
focusing on the tricuspid valve mainly. Okay, so it is clear now. The structure uh, here is RA, and we have tricuspid valve opening into the RA. This is the video of PSEX view at the level of mitral wall, in which we can see the mitral wall in between, interventricular septum here and RB above. Again, PSEX view at the level of mitral wall. Then this is the PSEX view at the level of papillary muscles in which we can see uh, RB and LB contracting along with the contraction of the papillary muscles. This is PSHV at the level of LV apex in which we can see that LV apex is clear that is there is no clot. This is apical four chamber view in which LA is here then give LV, RA and RV. We can also subjectively see that there is good contractility and uh, the walls are moving freely. So definitely there are measurement criteria to look for ejection fraction and to look for valvular stenosis or regurgitation. But grossly by looking at this apical fourth chamber view, we can see that walls are moving freely and contractility is good. Again, I'll uh, start it. Now this is a pical five chamber view in which we will see the aorta also. So this is a pical five chamber view. LA, LV, RA, RV and aorta in bit. Along with we will see this aortic wall. And we have this a pical two chamber view showing LA, LV and focusing on mitral wall. Then we have this apical three chamber view showing LA, LV, and aorta along with the aortic wall. We can also see uh, the pulmonary veins opening into LA here. This is the suprasternal view showing aorta and its branches. Then we have this substernal or subcostal view, or we can also call it as sublifoid view, which we can see this LA, LV, mitral wall, RA, RB, and right. Then this is the view, sub subcostal view, to look for IVC, in which we can see the IVC and hepatic vein merging and fuse. Uh, and opening into this RA. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, in upcoming classes, we'll discuss about different valvular heart disease and the eco findings in them.